I'm Romero Johnson, boss of bosses of the Romero family and owner of the New Black Wall Street. My name is Romero Johnson, but most people who really know me knows and calls me by my middle name, which is Saint. I'm a person who stays out of the way of everything. I try to avoid any and all conflict. I'm a man not of many words. I don't like being around a lot of people at one time. I try to keep my nose out of other people's business. I've been at peace with myself for a very long time now. So I avoid people and situations that try to infringe upon that peace. And even if no one is infringing upon that peace, most of the time, I'd rather be by myself to avoid the very possibility of anything happening. And a whole bunch of other attributes that I care not to name right now. But over time, I'll be an open book to you all. I was raised in a single parent household. But I did know and have a relationship with my father. Both my father's mother and my mother's mother were devout Christians. They praised the name of Jesus faithfully. But I had the most beautiful relationship with my grandparents on my father's side. Every chance I got, that's where you'll find me. I was taught as a child that wherever me and my people go together, then we better come back together whether friends or family, with major emphasis on that better. Because God forbid we all went somewhere and the confrontation jumped off. And I ran back home without my people talking about I was scared. That would have been the day that my mother would have gave me something to be scared of, which would have been her. I was also brought up to know that I better have my ass home before the streetlights came on, or I was getting the shit beat out of me. I remember being about 12 years old in the projects, and I was down the hill from our apartment, which was about 200 yards away. 200 yards don't seem that far, but when you have to bend corners, run up flights of stairs, go through the woods, and around other apartment buildings, that's a nice little distance. Nevertheless, I was down the hill having fun with some friends. And I totally lost track of time until them street lights started flickering. When those street lights started flickering, that's when I started running. <laughs> I remember as I was running and came to our building, as soon as I turned that corner, my mother was standing outside with a mean ass look on her face. I remember being about 10 to 15 feet away from her when I slid in the dirt like I was playing Major League Baseball. And I was safe. Because the street lights just came on when I got there. As a child, I enjoyed a great many things. But going fishing was in my heart and soul. I had a friend whose older relative used to take us out to Sandusky, Ohio frequently to fish. We would be out there overnight and used to come back home with buckets of catfish. I also loved to watch the Saturday morning cartoons. The cartoons of this day and age are so much different from the cartoons that I grew up on. Back in my day, we had cartoons that taught morals and values that you'd apply in everyday life. They taught us to do acts of random kindness for and towards others. They taught us to stand up for the weak and defenseless. They taught us the difference between right and wrong and to always choose right over wrong. I feel that those of us that grew up watching those cartoons have overall better morals and values in comparison to this new generation. I'm a 70s baby, so some of the movies that was hot back then, especially in my community, was movies like The Godfather, Scarface, The Untouchables, and many others. These movies pulled at every project's kids in a gangster. So much so 
that if we as kids saw another kid doing something that they weren't supposed to be doing, then we were going to shake you down for them little nickels, dimes, and quarters that we knew you had in your pockets. And if you didn't have it in your pockets, then you had to go home and get it to put it in our pockets. Because parents back then would beat their kids' asses for something they taught you not to do if you did it. Especially black parents. So you was going to pay that little don't snitch on me tax that we inflicted on you. Back then is when I had my first thoughts of organizing my own family like the ones that we were mimicking on the movies. The problem was we were just kids. So there was no real understanding of the whole organizational and business structuring of it. All we saw was violence, power, and money. And that was enough for us knuckleheaded ass kids. In 2011, work was slow for me, so it was difficult for me to find employment. So I took that time and made a call to Everest University online to enroll into college, which I feel was one of the best decisions that I ever made. My major that I signed up for was business administration because I've always had the dream of owning my own business. But that dream was also interconnected with organizing and bringing up my people as a whole. I still remember that first week of school clearly as it was yesterday. I signed up for three classes that 2011 semester. And the class that I'm going to talk about now was Understanding Business by Nichols, McHugh, and McHugh. In our first week, the professor assigned to us a chapter to read. And after we've read it, we must write an essay on about the class that we were taking in school. As I was reading that chapter, the information on business that I was reading was so profound that the only thing I found myself saying over and over and over and over with each new paragraph and page was, Damn! That's gangster! Gangster in the context meaning that it was some slick shit that I was reading. Shit that was so slick that this was what I grew up seeing the mobsters do in the movies that I used to watch. Needless to say, my essay became titled, Business is Gangster," Which then inspired and soon became my unpublished book, From Cleveland to Corporate, Business is Gangster." From that point, I now had a book in my possession that needed editing and publishing. And when I found an actual book publisher, she was so unprofessional that I ended up losing six or seven hundred dollars going back and forth with her about my fucking book. It's my fault though. I should have researched her and other publishing companies first. But the excitement of me about to become a published author surpassed the intellectual conscience that I should have had in the beginning. So that back and forth put me at a standstill. I couldn't move how I wanted to move or when I wanted to move. Or because of someone else's ignorance and lack of understanding. Now, my mind was running a thousand miles per hour. And I couldn't figure out how I was going to finance the overall mission to get my book published. During this downtime, I remember that business taught us that anything that you want to get to the general public, one of the best ways to do that is through commercialization. So I started making commercials to promote my book because the way that I figured when my money gets right I'll find me a legitimate publisher who will do right by me and my intellectual property. After writing my commercials I noticed that I'm actually gifted in writing. And that's when I decided to turn my book commercials into short film scripts. Then I would YouTube them, get the YouTube money that rich YouTubers are getting, then get my book published professionally. But the YouTube views didn't go as fast as I would have liked them to go. So I started writing different genres of short films. During this next round of downtime, 
I started coming up with businesses that I would open to keep revenues coming in once my book sales blew up. Because I don't even want to try to attempt to live off the revenues of just one book forever. That's how rich people go broke. As I was designing these businesses and their inner workings, I designed them to fit a market that I know firsthand. My people. And the shit that we need to successfully thrive. Then I found myself stepping back and creating more television shows and full-length movies. The ideas just kept coming. As of today, I've created about 60 shows and movies combined. And since my people never left the forefront of my mind about anything that I did, I figured that not only will I produce my shows and movies, but I can produce my people's shows and movies too. There's a great deal of my people out there with shows that they've written and trying to get to the market. Besides, I never wanted to get rich while the majority of my people stay broke. I want me and my people all to get paid. Then, the more business that I created took me back to my ideas of when I was a kid to start my own organized crime family, without the crime being involved, of course. And this is how the Romero family and the new Black Wall Street came to be. I do want to add this, though. I said a lot of, I did this and I did that in this particular show. When in truth, all glory goes to God. Because every thought, idea, and business that I created, it was really Yahweh who predestined them for me to bring to pass. And every place, posture, and position that I was stepping and moving my feet into, it was He that led and directed my footsteps to and on the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Baby.